A2 stud. Um, had uh, a couple people ask me about the uh, period looking uh, six foot spears I make. So today we're going to show you how to do some of those. Uh, of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, uh, call me, whatever. Uh, most of these uh, are done because I, I think our uh, our uh, spears mostly just look like two tips instead of spears and these have a much better look um, and as everything I make it you don't have to make it exactly like I do you can use your own style and own flair these are just ideas on making things look a little bit better for us and for the people that watch us perform and fight. So if you have any questions or if I skip out anything, please forgive me and I will try to make <coughs> uh, make this as uh, complete as possible. Okay? So, so first thing is uh, some of the materials I'm using. Um, I have the inch and a half shaved rattan that I get from Master Eric Christian Grades Armory. Um, I like the inch and a half stuff because that way I can <clears throat> I can cut contours in the head and make it actually look more like a spearhead. Uh, you don't have to leave the base of them inch and a half. You can shave them down. To what fits your hand a little bit better. I, I'm pretty partial to the inch and a half thickness. Um, he sells these in nine foot sticks, and I usually cut them down to right at six foot and then trim them after I get the uh, the head built onto it. That way they're right at six feet. So, uh, some of the other stuff that I use here, I have architectural foam, uh, pole arm foam that I buy from. Jamie Blackrose and uh, by my hand guys uh, he can cut it for you or he can sell you a block and you can cut it yourself um, <clears throat> these are inch and a quarter uh, maybe a little over uh, thick blocks they're usually glued together like so um, I, what I usually do is I'll, I'll draw my pattern in it, cut it out, and then split it in half and use it that way. <clears throat> um, I got regular strapping tape, uh, the bi-directional strapping tape, regular duct tape, um, some of the phone tips that I actually get from Master Eric also. Uh, I, yes, I've shaved, shaved them, shaped them into points. Uh, this one, I ran out of tips, so I'm actually having to construct one myself, so it looks a little weird. Uh, this is nice garment grade leather. Uh, nice and flexible, and then uh, I used to reinforce the uh, tip uh, on the recessed tip. Yes, that is a bottle of crazy glue. I'll explain that in a minute. That's just specifically for holding the... <clears throat> the foam in place while I strapping tape it. Um, of course I got my usual favorite tools there, my one inch band sander, five inch disc sander, and of course my uh, 12 inch disc sander. Uh, of course you, if you don't have those you can use anything from draw knives to rasps. Some of these rasps are really nice uh, for uh, trimming down rattan uh, you can get some of the Harbor Freight has some of the nice smaller ones that uh, work really good too uh, of course the rasp files take a little bit longer but if you don't mind doing the work then it's all good <clears throat> so basically I do three types of uh, spearheads on these guys. The, 
it's not all there is to it, but three are the basic ones that I use, which is, which is uh, the, uh, the lobed head, which is the rounded, uh, rounded edge blades, um, the diamond shaped blade, and the barbed blade, which the diamond and barb are probably the most recognized of the spearheads that uh, out there, but you can do basically any kind of shape you want on them. Uh, they're not limited to just the ones that I make. Okay, so first thing I guess we start with uh, deciding what kind of head you want to make. I uh, use my architectural foam and I keep it in one piece so that's an inch and, inch and quarter thick piece. I draw my pattern uh, of the head I want to do. Uh, basically a trick to that is making sure that the thickness of or the width of the blade head is right at or just over half an inch. You don't want to go any further than that. Um, that way you, you know you stay within the confines of the rules for uh, protruding through a bar grill uh, of a helmet. <clears throat> now I'll draw my pattern out. These are six inch long patterns got a lobed one here as well. Like I said, I'll cut these out with a band, my bandsaw and I'll leave them solid like this when I'm getting ready to go put them together. I'll break them apart or cut them apart and uh, use them that way. So they do not have to be an inch and a quarter wide if they are only half inch thick. So they will not protrude through a bar grill more than half an inch. Okay, so uh, constructing these heads are a lot like the um, sword bevels that I do, the sword edging that I do. You're going to mark the rattan uh, at one end. Sorry about that. So, inch and a half rattan, shaved rattan. Um, I mark my center, my two center lines, um, half inch striking surface, which is not necessarily a striking surface. I still do this because it gives me um, my area so I can know where my foam is going to be placed. And, of course, uh, uh, I angle angle the, at the sides so you'll have a nice little center line profile for these guys um, when you shave these down it'll look like a blade head uh, also I mark my uh, the blade head actual blade surface uh, which is about five and a half inches um, and then the taper and the um, the hasp part of the uh, spearhead I will come in and carve those in later with the band, band center and basically I'm going to round, round this off uh, so I use that one inch area there to round that off and the two inch area there to make the uh, to make the hasp uh, and I kind of just draw them on there to give me a, a reference on where my marks are and how I'm going to do it so okay so we're ready to shave the head part of this spear so uh, I'm going to use my 12 inch disc and 
I'm basically going to use half of the disc to shave down my shape. Um, the 5 inch disc works just as good. Um, angle grinders, any of those things, they work good. You just gotta make sure you have a definitive line of where you're going. This part's going to get loud, so I apologize. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is line up my line on the uh, front there, keep it straight. And my black line is here to the edge of the disc. And I'm just going to carefully take this down basic head shape cut down. As you can see it goes all the way to my line there. Now the interesting thing about these disc sanders is they're pretty close to the edge here so it only gives me about maybe quarter inch of space between the guard and the sandpaper. So a lot of times you'll have a taper of how far you can go because you're going to go so deep on this end. So normally I'll take and I'll trim that back up on the band sander uh, just, to, just to even even that transition out uh, or that taper out there. Okay, moving over to the smaller disc sander. Uh, I'm just going to clean up these edges. and consistent you see your nice straight line there there's your edge surface so you can put your uh, your foam there and now I'm going to move move on to the uh, base of the blade head okay I moved over to the band part of my band sander <coughs> Now I'm going to cut the uh, the base of the spearhead. So basically, the we'll round it into the spearhead, and it's I'm not really going to round it like that. I'm just going to make a cone shape here. 
like so. And then I'll turn around and do another cone, a longer cone for the flange here. So, apologize for the noise. So this will get a little loud. see the blend oh, maybe yeah. back out of this a little bit Probably. There we go. so you can see where I smoothed out the blend and continue just continue my line my blade line uh, through the through the taper so I'll do that on both sides and then I'll go to the flange and I'll use the, the, the five inch disc to contour this into this flange into that uh, base. Okay this part's getting a little bit tricky so what I want to do is I want to put the outside edge of my disc sand, sander right in the crook of that uh, the base and the taper for the flange so I want to do an angle similar to that because I want my flange to run out here okay so then I'll come back and I'm going to I'm going to trim that in a little bit so it looks like it's actually a head mounted on a stave. So I'll do that part and hopefully you can get a better idea of what I'm doing on that one. It's kind of a hard angle to see. But. And more noise. So I'm starting at a little steeper angle, if you can see that, and as I roll it, I go longer and longer until this is an all flat to make the flange look a little straighter.
I've got a nice start to my flange. The head is blended into that flange a little bit better. And now I can start working on the, uh, the little cut in I have to do here to make this part of the head seem like it's separate from the haft. So when you go to tape it, it actually looks like a, the head has actually been mounted onto the shaft itself. Okay, so our flanges have been blended in. The, uh, the head has been blended into the base. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly cut in this area. It's basically, I'm cutting an angle that way into that line. So it'll be like this. Cutting it into that line so I get just a little bit of a ledge here. So it looks like that the flange is stuck onto that base. So I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> I'm going to be holding it at about this angle and I'm just going to lightly cut into my line and I'm going to follow it all around so I get just a little bit of a ledge there. So a little bit of noise. the the blend on the taper right off the flange so when I tape this part here it'll look like metal sitting on top of wood shaft okay so now we have our taper um, we have our blade face we have our base we have our flange and our cut in the flange attachment. Now I'm going to add my little recess that I put up here so I can put my leather around it to act as a pocket for the uh, foam tip. I'm just using the width of the band to cut in my notch. I'm only going down about an eighth of an inch. Just enough to reset the leather in it. So it hides the leather and reinforces your pressing cut.
nice a nice recess like I said it's only about an eighth inch deep allows me to uh, there you go that's better only about eighth inch deep it allows me to recess my leather and uh, it'll sit in there nicely and make a nice seamless uh, pocket reinforcement for my thrusting tip it won't be this long I'm going to trim it down first I'll only be about half an inch past the rattan just enough to keep the foam in place okay the thrusting tips I use pointed thrusting tips because I like the look of them uh, the thing you have to be careful with is not going too steep of an angle because um, then it will definitely go too far into a bar grill. This is a, a 45 degree angle, so 45 to 45. Um, I usually buy these pre-cut from Master Eric when he has them. Uh, if he doesn't have them and I make my own, I buy the, uh, uh, they're a little over inch and a half, the pole arm thrusting tips. Uh, they're usually like two inches long and a half wide. <clears throat> I made a little modification to my my angle guide for my band sander. I added a piece of aluminum so it goes all the way right to the edge as far as I can get it. Uh, let's see if I can focus on that for you. There we go. So I just got a little bit of a gap in between it, just enough so it doesn't hit the it doesn't hit the paper. Um, and what I'll normally do is I'll set it in here like this and I'll, I'll run these right up to and if you notice I'm using almost almost the center yeah, so I'm gonna throw some light in there there we go um, almost to the center that way there's less torque on the uh, foam because this is squishy and that sandpaper wants to grab it so I go right towards the center and I won't go straight to a point. I'll, I'll do, and I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble getting it to stay focused on it. Um, I'll, I'll get it almost to a point where I have a little gap, and then I'll, I'll take it and I'll turn it this way. And I'll just slightly let it take it off. Um, to where I can marry my point, uh, marry my angle so I can hit my point. So it's just still up close to the center of it so there's not too much torque on it. And uh, that way I get a nice, nice peaked thrusting tip. Um, now this one, like I said, it's not the normal so I have to actually put a little extra piece of foam at the bottom um, it's a little squishier foam so it's a little taller than what the tips Eric sells is but the ones that Eric sells are the perfect height for these um, I've got my leather cut and as soon as I find them It's not the leather. <sighs> Sorry about that. I'm tripping over a couple things. <laughs> all right, so all right, so there's my uh, recess. There's my leather strip. Like I said, it's going to sit about a half an inch above the rattan. And I usually start it on, I gotta trim this up a little bit on the sides, but I start it on the, the, um, my center line, straight line, and I'll wrap it around so I'll have a nice stopping area. You can see how much I have to trim off of there. But it sits down in that recess really nice, so there's not much of a, space there and it's hard to tell that it's even there so 
Um, I'll put that together with the thrusting tip next. Okay, I got my uh, leather trimmed uh, to length. All my corners are straight. So now I'm ready to add my strapping tape. I use the uh, bi-directional strapping tape for these. Um, anything that I do that is structural, sorry for that, uh, that is structural, I use the uh, bi-directional strapping tape. Uh, so thrusting tips, um, uh, catching cross guards, pommels, uh, anything that that I need something that's going to be able to hold up to a structural uh, a structural weight I'm going to or, or structural torque I'm going to put the, the bilateral strapping tape on it um, bi-directional strapping tape <clears throat> the reason for that is regular strapping tape only has filaments going in one direction so They're only going in one direction, so it'll have a tendency if you don't run them against where your pressure is going, it will split and come apart easier. So I do use this too, but when it goes to stuff like the thrusting tips or the the foam blades that I'm putting on here, I will attach those with the bi-directional. I will also show you how to do it without bi-directional tape. So, so I'm going to bring my foam all the way around till it meets. Grab my strapping tape and I will get it started. Everything nice and smooth. So now I have this nice pocket that's a reservoir for to hold my to hold my thrusting tip in, and it, that way your tape is not hitting against the rattan. Um, it helps keeps it from tearing your thrusting tips off. Um, this technique I've used for quite a while and probably in the last 10 years, and I know some people are going to argue with me on this, but probably in the last 10 years, I think I may have lost three or four strapping, or three or four thrusting tips. And that's about it. So, I really like the way this works. <clears throat> uh, it reinforces your tips, there's no fold over. And it also uh, keeps the tape from, from being cut on the retain. So I'm going to take some of this um, bidirectional strapping tape. And I'm going to cut it in half. Normally I don't have to do this with this one because it's all one piece. But because I'm kind of stuck for tips right now. But, uh, sorry about that. so I'm lining up the peak, lining up the peak of my thrusting tip with the straight line of the uh, blade edge. I'm going to try to keep this in frame so I can't really see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it, not a lot. Now my uh, peak is in line with my straight line on both sides. Oops, sorry about that. There we go, that's better. So now I can just add a little bit now. If, if you see here, 
Let me turn it aside. When you put your strapping tape on, it's going to take a lot of the really sharp peak out, which is what you want. You want a slightly rounded, um, a slightly rounded uh, peak. You don't want a full sharp peak on it. Not that it's going to hurt anything. It just it's a lot less. Uh, obtrusive to some people so a lot of times they see they see that really pointed peak they're like well it's going to go in an eye no, no sorry that really pointed peak there and think it's going to go in somebody's eye slot it won't so we round them a little bit so that we don't have any really sharp peaks on anything so but it still has a nice um a nice pointed profile And I can use the uh, regular strapping tape to finish this out and get out the roll. Hmm. So we get everything straight. There we go. All right, so I am also going to split this in half. What I'm going to do with this bit. <laughs> oh, my advertising clear eyes. Um, so, what I'm going to do with this bit is I'm going to do the ends here with the regular strapping tape. And I'm going to get these right to the edge. And I'm going to level it out with the other strapping tape I have on there. And just smooth out your ends. I'll do a couple, a couple layers of this just to help keep it nice and sturdy and hold up to shearing pressure and you still have a really nice pointed tip there <clears throat> and bear with me here I'm trying to get to uh, my edge of my strapping tape there you are all right same thing, go back to my bi-directional strapping tape. Split that down the middle. I'm going to do my sides. There we go. That's better. Okay, so the sides are a little funky so I can keep my peak and I don't kill my, my peak on my strapping tape. I'm going to put it right up to the edge. Smooth it down and I'm going to put a little pressure on it to this side so that I can keep my peak. And same thing on the other side. Take it right to the top of the peak sometimes you gotta get a little tuck I'm pulling that down at an angle that matches the angle of the flat here okay so I'm pulling it down at a little bit of an angle like that and I'm gonna put a piece of regular strapping tape around here to, to smooth all that out. Since I've already got all my structural bits in there, I can use the regular strapping tape and not worry about it. It's splitting. So I'm going to start right up here. We got a nice little bump going. 
I'm going to level a lot of that out, put a little bit of pressure around the sides, a little bit of pressure. right in the center just so I can lay, so I can lay it down flat I like I like for my tape to be really nice and flat and smooth it gives me a better finish I don't see a bunch of big wrinkles in it all right I'm gonna come back down here around the base of my leather and run another round of the bi-directional to be safe a little reinforcement around the base, pulling it really nice and tight, Get it nice and smooth. Sorry. There, and now I can finish out the rest of this with regular strapping tape. Um, but first, I'm going to put the fins on and show you what crazy glue is for. Okay, so uh, you've cut the shape of your fins out of your, oops, out of your pole arm foam. And yes, I cut it in half. So I got two three quarter inch pieces. All right, and they are half an inch thick. Maybe a tad bit more. Where your crazy glue comes into play. So on your my tape over here, sorry. So on your your striking surface, your flat surface. So you're gonna line up. Your blade, your fin, so you know where, where you want it to rest. In this case, I want it to rest right there. Yes, you're on top of the the leather reinforcement, but that's okay. If you have to go replace the tip, you're going to cut uh, basically the tape away anyway, and it'll pop right out of the socket, so you shouldn't have too many problems with it. So, mark the back. And this is where the uh, crazy glue comes into place now. Um, pay particular attention to this because I'm only using uh, one, two, three small drops of crazy glue. So this will in no way interfere with your rattan or the flexibility and will not make this rigid. So I'm going to line it up in my line. Now because you're putting this on your tape, it'll take a few extra seconds to hold. Maybe you just hold it down like that for a little bit until it stays. And then I'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, the glue is set. I'm going to take some of my bi directional strapping tape and I'm just going to secure down the ends of these. Now I'm going to keep it really close to the foam until it meets the rattan. Just keep it really snug down there so it keeps all the creases out. Make it nice and smooth. Just again I'm going to follow down the foam. Keep it nice and flat.
This helps keep any gaps in between the foam out. Um, keep those shearing issues away. So I'm going to do front and, top, uh, front and back, or top, uh, yeah, front and back. Everything nice and smooth. over and do the other side. So that's our secure tape. I'm going to take some more of my bi-directional. Now I'm going to go lengthwise. So I'm going to lay it right in that crease that was created. From where the rattan and the foam meet. Cover that over. Gives me another extra, little extra strength on keeping those from any way of getting sheared off. So, if you do this with the the regular strapping tape, the unilateral strapping tape, what I recommend is directionally you go this way. with your first line go this way with your long line and then one more over top that gives you bi-directional strength on it um, and they won't rip off if you just go in the line that the in the line in in the direction of the line that it's it is it's going to eventually rip off because it doesn't have any linear strength with the fibers it has to go against the fibers to have your extra strength on it so you do that all the way around sometimes you're going to have to do a little little trickery with the uh the tail end of this thing split my uh bi-directional in half to lay this across the top down to my crease got a little bit of angle on that in there and then when I get to this part here I want to make sure that it hits both the rattan and the foam so I don't leave any creases now it's going to sound uh, look a little weird but I am going to split that let it go in the direction it wants to go so I have a nice smooth surface to work off of there. And that will add all the rigidity I need to, or all the strength I need to keep the fins on. So I do that all the way around. And once I get the fins attached to it, I will run a piece of uh, the bi bi-directional across here to kind of bind everything together. Okay, and the last part of the of dealing with the fins is the very top. You want to make sure this little notch right here gets fastened down really tight. It's a good shearing point. Uh, so I use a piece all by itself and pull it down nice and tight. Make sure you have a, a, a nice smooth transition here. Both sides.
and now I can start strapping tape on the rest of the piece. Since the rest of it is just um, it's non-structural, it's basically to keep uh, broken bits from flying across, and also it, it's an easier transition for when you need to change your tape. I can use the regular linear strapping tape to just basically fill in those spaces. Yeah, I take a lot of time smoothing out my tape so there's not a lot of wrinkles in it. That's where it's going to show all your bad taping once you put your final tape over top of it. So I try to make sure that I and, uh, try to smooth out all the wrinkles in it before I put my final tape on it. I take a lot of time just to, well not a lot, I take it a decent amount of time just to make sure that it's all laying down flat. It also helps it to to stay adhered when it's all nice and flat. There's no air pockets in it. You get a couple spots here at the transitions between the base and the and the flange. Uh, so I take my tape. For the base part, I'll split it in half and just run right. Let's see if I sorry, my hands in the way. Run it right to the base of the 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 the, the intersection of the base and the, and the flange, and then I'll I'll flare that up. Cover all the rattan. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just a little bit past the intersection of where the base and the uh, flange meet. Like so. itself so I'm going to use a piece at the top and a piece at the base so we'll start at the top smoothing out the last taping I did do the same thing a slight overlap Let's see that slight overlap smooth down the center work my way out Same thing, smooth this out, slight overlap, well, it's about a quarter of an inch, I don't know if you can see that very well, it's about a quarter of an inch overlap, wrap it, smooth it, a couple of wrinkles, nothing major, and I think I can cover everything with a half a piece, so I'm going to split my strapping tape on this one. Try to get it right to the transition from the flange to the half. So probably a little tiny bit of overlap, just so I can roll it under. 
And the good part is you don't need to worry about going over too far because you can always trim it off. And just like that there. So make sure you tuck it into, into the cut there. Run it all the way around and once we get this other piece on, we'll trim that. Same thing here. We're going to move over. And then run. Like so. Take the carpenter knife and I'm just going to run it in the the cut there, a little cut out for the flange, like so, and remove the excess. times I'll take the back of my knife and I'll uh, just run it in there to kind of cinch up that tape up into that crease. You get a nice clean line there. It'll pop up so once in a while. I'll just run it. Now for the uh, the outside tape. Hardest part here is getting that tip. So little trick that I do. So I take my tape, and I'll run it about my tape about halfway over run it all the way down carpenter knife start with the center and this line here so, so you got the center here, you got this line here, so I'm going to cut that one too, right there. We'll do the same thing on the other side, right about there, so it gives me a nice couple of tabs to work off of. So put a little pressure on that, pull that in. Same thing with the top piece. Pull that over. And then I'll fold the, in, the inside tabs over. Like so. Gives me a nice clean top. Do both sides of that. And uh, the fins itself or a lot like uh, with the strapping tape. Let's go a little bit further. So I go over a little over half. Like so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to all of the odd angles got one here we got one here at the round top round one here at the back round so I'll probably do two cuts there and then one here in the crease of the base so uh, cut tape there sorry about that get your weight on uh, 
there, 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 and then there. So, biggest piece goes last. Put all my small bits first, put a little pressure on them, stretch out that tape. Silver tape has a tendency to dull out really quickly if you're not careful, so I wouldn't do a whole lot of rubbing on it. Just try to make sure you get all your your bubbles out and all your, your lines out. Now I'll run a I'll run a piece, a full piece down over top of all those once I get my fins done. Um, flange takes some I'll strip some half pieces of, of the duct tape and I'll do the same thing I did before except for I'll run from the fin up on both sides. That way when I go back to do my big wrap it will cover all that up. So and flip it a little bit. Overlap here. A little bit of pressure on that helps stretch it into the corners, uh, into the crease there, so you don't have a a lot of wrinkles. Just a little bit of pressure. So once you do that, you can wrap it around your base, and once again trim your, your, your flange here. That'd be about it. Okay, skipped ahead a little bit. Um, Went ahead and finished taping it up because the uh, last thing you guys want to do is spend the next 20 minutes watching me be OCD about my tape job. So, um, so there's the um, head finish. You can see the fins. You can see the flange, and with the end cut on the sh on the haft there, you, it makes it look like. A metal head placed on a wooden shaft so a couple more a couple last things to do I'm gonna swing over here is uh, I have to actually measure this go from tip six feet um, or I cut this retain at six feet so when I add the head on it I have to go through and adjust for my skin. So I will cut that off there. cut it, it's set at a 90. I'm going to take this, make sure this is nice and flat. I'm just rolling it, make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to get my, my 45 degree guide. And I'm going to just cut in a little bit of a bevel on the end.
makes a nice finish edge and I will build up tape on this end so I'll, I'll wrap some tape around here to make a nice end stop that way your hand doesn't slide off the end of the end of the spear when you're fighting with it and of course the last thing is everybody's like well oh, hey we start don't you have to mark your edge in that like, well yeah you do I usually don't mark my edges um, until I actually give it to somebody because I like the look of them um, without extraneous tape on them. So, for the since this one is a spear, <clears throat> I'm going to put I'm going to put a stripe here, and just so there's no confusion, I'll cross it. That way everybody knows that this is just a thrusting, um, just a thrusting weapon. Now technically, because this does have a head, you can use this as a leaf blade and mark your edges and use it like a polearm. Um, only problems I've found with that is with this short of a head, everything works in really well in proportion. But once you go with a longer, once you go with a longer head, it's going to make the profile a little bit off. You can, I'd say you can probably do. Um, <coughs> About a 10 inch, a full 10 inch head, and still keep the half an inch um, thick or width on the foam. And uh, that will still be legal. So, there you go. Stand this puppy up over here so you can see it. <clears throat> so, all that's left on that is to stain it and put the end stop tape on it so I'm going to wrap those that tape at the end it's just I usually just strip about half an inch bits of, of uh, duct tape uh, and run it like that and I'll build it up just so that you can feel it and there's your profile so it's ready to be stained um, you can also find these little bits of duct tape too I love these things when you can find them they're a little hard to find I know uh, Hobby Lobby and so forth have them they're uh, little three quarter inch three quarter inch rolls of duct tape make great for all the small detail stuff you got um, but, so that's about it on the spears. Um, if you have any questions or comments or whatnot, just let me know. Um, I hope you guys have fun with them. I enjoy making spears. I've made several of them for uh, the past few royals for having spear tourneys. Um, I think they feel great. They handle great. And they actually work a lot better like a spear. So, happy weapons making. I hope you guys have fun. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Um, let me know if you can think of anything you'd like to see me do. Or if you have any uh, comments or changes you think I should make to these. Hey, feel free to let me know. Okay? Thanks. Bye. Be safe.